be my guest, we are going to be doing some cooking. So, as you know, we're on the top of Mungri Mountain with Kathy, and we had a lot of requests for what we were eating. <laughs> so, thank you very much for joining me here on HAPS. We've accepted the HAPS challenge, so and so can you. So, why don't you do your own broadcast as well and keep on going? And I can see I've got five new messages, so let's check them out. Jimmy, awesome. How's it going? Fantastic. So, welcome, welcome. I am using my old faithful Rebecca. Fantastic. How's it going, little Becky Barton, Manchester? Sending you Afghans across the high seas. <laughs> Bob, oh, you should be making dinner, giving you some ideas. Dinner tonight, I'm doing tandoori chicken, but it's already been done for me. So um, I've got a, a virtual tour later on. So I'll be coming home and eating very quickly. Yeah, kia ora. So everybody, Afghans. This is a very popular cookbook. Oh, hold on, the oven's beeping. I need to get something out. <laughs> <laughs> We're always an interruption. There we go. The first, the first lot are done, but I'm going to be showing you how to make them. So I'll just put these over here for a moment. Um, this is, I'll show you the very finished product. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this. Kathy, awesome. I'm doing the Afghans, especially for Kathy. <laughs> so welcome everybody. Afghans, very controversial last year. We never ever thought about it before, but uh, the name Afghan, where does it come from? Um, you know, there was a big movement last year and everything got very PC. So a lot of things in New Zealand, Australia, around the world started to change as we thought. G'day Mo, how's it going? Sharon, awesome, Sharon. Oh, nice to see you. Um, yeah, so we started thinking about the names of things and actually, Afghan was one of them. So it has actually been renamed, and I'm going to tell you a little bit later on what it's been renamed into. But in the meantime, we're going to get on with making some Afghans. Oh, no. it may be delicious. It may be, that's for sure. So it comes from the Edmunds cookbook. We always say it's the number one. We call them biscuits in New Zealand, really, not cookies. But we always say it's the number one cookie or biscuit in New Zealand because the very first one starting with A that appears in the Edmunds cookbook. We're, oh swag doctor how's it going we are oh Julia fantastic we are doing afghans so let me quickly show you what an afghan looks like they're actually no longer called afghans but hey we still do <laughs> very very easy very simple simple recipe so I'm going to give you the recipe as we go along and Mo, welcome. I'm going to give you the recipe as we go along, and we're going to get on with making them. <laughs> I, honestly, it puts me out of my comfort zone doing this, so it's actually quite good for me. Biscuits is a sensible name for them, it sure is. So, first of all, we need, need 200 grams of butter. I'll tell you at the end of the show what the new name is, because we're going to compare. 200 grams of butter in New Zealand, it's very easy because each line, you can see each one is in 50 grams. 200 grams of butter is seven ounces. And this is what it looks like. So you need seven ounces of butter and it needs to be soft. So it needs, I've actually had a little bit of a stressful morning because I decided... Um, I'm just going to put you down a little bit. I've decided that um, glass bowls are much better. So I had to go out and find glass bowls. And I managed to get, bought this one first, which I think is not big enough. And then I got this one. So you can see exactly what's going on. So I've been driving all over all kind of trying to find glass mixing bowls. <laughs> so give that butter. You can see what it's like. Give the butter a good whirl. Whoa. Biscuits in Australia too. Yeah. Good. Actually, I probably could have just done with one. So now that's nice and soft. I'm going to tip it into the third bowl <laughs> because it was crazy. I was driving and driving. To... <laughs> so that's just going to go in there. 200 grams or seven ounces of butter. I'll use this. Um, I'll probably be able to use that bowl again for something. Oh, no, I definitely will be, but I'm just thinking today how we do. So Afghans, Afghans. So Kathy was on tour with me on 
Wednesday and we sat at the top of the mountain and we had some Afghans. So had a lot of requests for the Afghan recipe again. So here we go. So when I was doing my tours, I used to always provide morning tea for people. In New Zealand, morning tea is called Smoko. Chantal! <laughs> Chantal, we're cooking! So there we go, there's the butter. In here, I need to add the sugar. Who loves cooking? So I'll just turn my scales on. Oh, error. Oh, it doesn't like it. Okay. Maybe too heavy this bowl. <laughs> Sean, awesome. You yes, see? Too heavy. So into here, we need to add. It happens when you buy new things. We need to add 75 grams of sugar or 75 grams of sugar or three ounces. So there's not a lot of sugar in this. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not having a good morning. <laughs> Let's start again. Seventy-five grams. Seventy-five grams or three ounces. So it's not a lot of butter. Um, sorry, not a lot of sugar, but it's quite a lot of butter, and that's what makes these so delicious because they are not sweet. So I'm just going to put the sugar in here. Chantal, thank you so much. Just going to put the sugar in here. My little scales. When when the bowl is too heavy, they will not. Um, it, it, I just come up with an error message, so I didn't, didn't think about that, did I? Let me, I've got a bit of sugar everywhere. <laughs> hey, this is cooking at home. This is not a, this is live, it's nothing's practiced, even though I have made, I've made these a million times. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chantal. So, as you know, I've introduced a new show here on um, HAPS TV. And we're going to be every Wednesday for me, Tuesday for most of you, we have something called Be My Tourist. So, I will invite somebody to visit New Zealand. <laughs> Chantal! I'll invite somebody to visit New Zealand with me each week. Um, the times will vary because it will depend when that person's available. Are we getting a good view? <laughs> Thank you so much, Chantal. Oh, here we go. Now, you probably won't see so much of me, which is not a bad thing. So you just mix this well together. You can see how it is. And then we add uh, 175 grams or six ounces of flour. So I'm just going to put this into the bowl here. Now you can't see what's happening. I'll move this over. That's 130. I need to open the new flour packet. We need 175. So I don't even bother to sift the flour. This is such a good basic recipe. 180. We'll just take a bit out of there because we don't want them too dry. Yep, perfect. Kathy, awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you guys are awesome. Put the flour in here. Put the flour in here. We also need 25 grams of cocoa. So here we go. You need a nice dark cocoa. Don't use chocolate because it's too sweet. Uh, you need this. So we're going to put in 25 grams of chocolate. 25 grams of, sorry, not chocolate, cocoa is one ounce. One ounce, and I'll just put it all in here along with this. And mix this together. This is actually quite a good bowl. 
Um, yeah, so today's Friday in New Zealand. It's a nice day outside. The America's Cup boats will be racing a little bit later on. And that's actually where I'm going to be doing my virtual tour from. So it's going to be busy over there. You can see it's quite a dry mixture, which that's not a bad thing. And it's the butter that holds everything together. So there's no baking powder in here, no raising agent at all. Next, the secret ingredient. And what will the secret ing ingredient be? <laughs> it is cornflakes. Uh, my ounces look big. Um, 25 ounce. Oh, sorry, no, it was 20, 25 grams or one ounce. So I measured it out. Maybe it looks big in that bowl, but it's it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Don't worry. And now we need to add 50 grams of cornflakes. So cornflakes are very light, as you know. Oh, and it might look a lot of cornflakes as well, because there we go. 50 grams of cornflakes. <laughs> G'day, Juan. How's it going? Nice to see you. That's 50 grams or two ounces. <laughs> this, my recipe book is quite old. And as you can see, it is written in grams and ounces, which is good, which is really good. So... Skippy the bush kangaroo. This is our, so in New Zealand we get our cornflakes mostly from Australia and you can see Skippy the bush kangaroo on there. It was a TV program many years ago. You believe me? Yeah, I know because they turn out. We've got a little story on the back about the nutrition um, and the cornflakes and you can dial up a recipe. No artificial flavours or preservatives. Good source of iron, folate, thiamine and niacin. And best before 26th of November. And it does say here. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> it says here, made right in New Zealand. <laughs> what is that? They've got a kangaroo on them. We must we must repackage them here. Proudly 100 percent New Zealand owned. So oh okay. So this comes from sanitarium. So sanitarium is sort of like um, quite commercial health foods here in New Zealand, but must be under license to Australia. Now, do you know about this? How fantastic! Thank you so much, Mappy. How's it going? Um, and something in Turkish, Mahaba, Mahaba, Mahaba. Anyway, let's get on with it. We're going to mix the cornflakes in here. Good. This recipe is foolproof. You too can do this at home. <laughs> really foolproof. And you know, if people don't know what is in it, what makes them crunchy, they always say, what is the, um, okay, break it while I cook you. People always say, what is that crunch that's in there? And they never guess it's going to be complex. So if your butter's too soft, I'll just give you a tip. If the butter's too soft and you think the mixture's a little bit runny, just keep it all mixed up like this and then put it in the fridge and wait for it to solidify a bit and then you'll be able to handle the cookies again. Oh, what's good? We are doing Afghans. Now, here's the finished product, which you'll, you'll be able to see before too long. Oh, you don't get them in a bag? Do you get them in a box? You might get them in a box. We do. Yeah. Hey, it's good to see you all. And for those of you that just joined, we are cooking from the Edmunds Cookbook, which is a traditional um, home cooking book. It's got it's got everything. If you need to know anything about cooking in New Zealand, you go to the Edmunds Cookbook. It's been around for a hundred years. It even tells you how to boil an egg. <laughs> Gently lower the egg into a saucepan of simmering water. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, chocolate cakes, shortbread, everybody has their own recipes tucked inside as well. Marshmallow, meringues, gatto, oh, that's posh, gatto. <laughs> yeah, Julie, fantastic. Yes, they are yummy. So that's the mixture. And yes, yeah, so if you have been on tour with me in New Zealand, you, you definitely know what an Afghan tastes like. <laughs> but I have known people to make them 
in other parts of the world using my recipe and they haven't turned out, turned out as well. So must be something in the butter. So I've got a few here that I've just taken out of the oven. We're going to get these ones ready to put into the oven. So what I do is I always recycle my paper. Oh, Antoinette, awesome! Woohoo! I always recycle my baking paper or parchment paper because you can. Galloping Gourmet, the Galloping Gourmet, yes, I remember, I remember. Yeah. Bernie, fantastic. Well, I'm a fan of all cooking shows, I love them. And I'm always, I love trying new things. I, I especially love Jamie Oliver, actually, because I think his, his recipes are very doable for most people. And, yeah, very, very doable, which is a great thing. So this mixture, I think it tells you, no, it doesn't. But you would get 15 really good-sized afghans, or you can make them whatever, whatever size you like. So I usually take a spoonful like that, it's about that much, and just put them on the tray. Um, I've got a trick to show you when they come out of the oven. Yeah, so you don't be too too careful with them. They just, just put them on here like that. Because they've got no, you can't really shape them because they're just going to do their own thing. But if you like perfect shaped cookies, I'll show you what to do. <laughs> so yeah, um, so sometimes I do big ones, sometimes I do small. If you do small, people are more inclined to have two rather than one. And the mixture is very, very buttery. So it's, and that is part of the deliciousness of them because when you, because there's not a lot of sugar in them, they are not sweet. And it's actually the topping, the icing that we put on the top that makes them sweet. So I'm just going to fill up this tray and then we'll put these in the oven and they go in the oven for 15 minutes at 350 or 180. My oven cooks a bit hot, so I do, yeah, 350, yeah. So my oven cooks a bit hot, so I usually just drop it down to about 175 and it makes a difference. And then you cook them for 15 minutes, so it's not, um, it's not too, it's not too long, you can almost just have them ready for, for smoke -o. I used to do them the night before for my tours. Chris, how's it going? In Boston there. I'm just going to stick these in the oven now, so because I've still got, I've got another lot that can go in once these are finished, so that's what we're going to do. Oh, phew, I feel like I'm getting into the swing of it a bit more now because I am... <laughs> We've got something going in the we've got something going in the oven. <laughs> so I'm not quite as quite as nervous. So there we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight of them just going in the oven now. Paula, fantastic. Nice to see you. We've got eight Afghans going in. For those of the you that know me from Periscope, I've had made Afghans a couple of times. So just putting these into the oven. I'll put the timer on for 15 minutes. Can't use Siri, that's good. And I'm going to bring over the ones that I've already cooked. Because there's a lovely um, icing that goes on the top of them. The icing is really, really good. And this is really what makes them. Woohoo! So there we go. We've made, I've just cooked these five Afghans. In fact, what I did was when I had Kathy on tour on Wednesday, I mixed up the afghans and I put these in the freezer just like this so I knew that I could get them out this morning and make them. So, looking makes you gain weight. Oh, this is you. Hello. How are you? Uh, yes, sometimes looking is just enough to, yeah, get you going. So I'll put that over there. And we are now going to make the... Uh, yeah, we're going to make the icing. So I think in America you might call it frosting. So for this we need um, we need a little bit of butter. So just hang on. So this making the icing looks they look fabulous. Yeah, they they are good. Antoinette, I will send one across the high seas to you, maybe. <laughs> 
So my newsletter went out today. So if you, it's got the recipe for the date loaf on it. So um, if you didn't get it, just check your, your um, spam because it might have gone in there or into your promotions. I'm just going to take some butter like this. That'll be enough. And I'm just going to put it into this little bowl and I'm going to melt melt this in the microwave. A kumara pie and fry bread. Whoa. So I'm just going to put that in, in the microwave. But I need some boiling water as well. So kill them all. Okay, so we use powder sugar. I usually I buy my fry bread. <laughs> kumara pie. Well, I don't know about a kumara pie, but um, I like a pie with kumara in it. It might be smoked fish. Smoked fish and kumara is good. Yeah. So there we go. I've melted a little bit of butter here. I'm going to put the so icing sugar. Are you both icing? Yeah. Hansel and Gretel. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to, this I am guessing, and you can guess as well because you can't go wrong here. If you make the icing too wet, you just add more icing sugar. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy. And I've got a really old knife that I love for using this because they're very, very thin and they're good for spreading. So it's like butter. <laughs> New Zealand butter. And just put some cocoa in here. You can make this as, I don't know, it's just really a guess thing because if you want it nice and dark, put quite a bit in. Um, it doesn't really do much else. So that just goes in there. And you could, so I was thinking you could, oh, you could make these um, gluten-free just by changing the flour. And you could make them vegan by using coconut oil as well. So that would work really well. Um, you know, so there's lots of options. I often do gluten-free or even what I call half gluten-free, which is with almond meal and another um and just ordinary flour so you can see it just starts going to liquid straight away so now my water has boiled so what i do this is where you've got to be really really careful <laughs> adding the water so i don't tip the water like that in because it's going to come out too much i rinse out this little bowl with the with the butter with the hot water and i just put a little bit in there because it's much easier to add than it is to try and um, yeah, but then it is to try and fix it up later. So I'm just going to give that a swirl and put that in there. So there's a certain texture that you want. Not bad. <laughs> That's actually pretty perfect. Because you just want it to be able to fall off the knife. You don't want it. It's not like icing a cake where you're spreading it across like that. You just want this to fall off the knife. And I think that's pretty good. If I put too much water in there, I'd just be putting a little bit more icing sugar in. So icing sugar is powder sugar. Uh, need to be careful too because often it has um, corn flour and other things added to it. And it's not gluten-free, but this, this particular one is gluten-free. So, normally I wouldn't pick up the cookie, but I will this time just to show you. So you just put a, so you can put in, you put the icing on, a little bit, it's a little bit thick actually, but that's okay, it doesn't matter, a little bit thick is fine, because it's not going to run everywhere, which is, which is good. And then the decoration. So I've got some Australian walnuts here. I think they're from Australia. Yeah, they're Australian. <laughs> Australian walnuts, not packaged in New Zealand. Macro whole food market. So some of the walnuts are whole and some of them are broken. It doesn't really matter because you can just make them. Oh, there's a whole, there's a whole one. You can make them look really nice as they, you know, just even with the broken pieces. So just put the walnut on top and give a little squash. And it's an Afghan. 
That's an afghan. Let's do another one. And I'll do this one. We'll do with the broken pieces so you can see what you, how you can make that work as well. Yeah, my icing's a little bit thick, but I don't want to get into playing around with it while I've got you here. It looks good, Hal. Oops, I'm sending you one. So just put little broken pieces on top, and they look quite interesting as well. And then just give them a little push down. Yum, Sherry. Yum, Candy. They're still slightly warm too. Hello, Alex. Yeah, so there we go. I've done two for you. If you wanted to, you could just melt some chocolate and put on top. Love walnuts. Yeah. You could just melt some chocolate and put on top as well. That works well. But I find that when you do that, the chocolate actually cracks and it doesn't. And it's not quite as nice because it goes really hard. Whereas this one, when you bite into it, it's soft and... There's something nice about eating a walnut. Oh, thanks, Julia. There's something nice about eating eating a um, an afghan. It's got the it's crunchy. It's melt in the mouth with the butter. The actual biscuit is not sweet, but the top of it is sweet. And uh, yeah, it's still warm. <laughs> I'm off for coffee after this, so I'm definitely I'll take my I'll take these over to my coffee people. <laughs> They look good, yeah, but they're so easy. They're so easy and foolproof. So I will read the recipe to you again in a moment, but I just wanted to tell you the story about the Afghans because we never thought there was anything about Afghans that was um, insulting or that made people feel uncomfortable. We just never ever thought about it. We've just grown up with Afghans all our lives. And they were made commercially as well by Griffins, the big biscuit company here. Oh, thanks, Alex. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm always taking them something. <laughs> I love my date loaf. Um, yeah, so these, that one there is left over from Wednesday with Kathy. And these two here are what we've just made. Yeah, kia ora, Danny. How's it going? Nice to see you. So they have been made commercially for a long time. And last year we had a big uproar about everything being culturally um, correct. And, of course, Afghans came up because it is um, – so we, ne we never thought about it. But actually people from Afghanistan are called Afghans. So I suppose it is insulting to them. Local homemade yummies, yeah, yeah. I suppose it is un insulting. So we took it quite seriously. And Griffins still make Afghans, but they have rebranded, renamed them to Ruffs. We're going to open it and have a look at it, and we're going to compare it. But I always think, now I think, you've got people coming over for afternoon tea, high tea, and are you going to say, would you like an Afghan? Or would you like a rough? <laughs> a rough always, I think, you know, we're going to have a bit of a, we're going to have a bit of a rumble. <laughs> Good, Danny. Oh, fantastic, Sherry. So we're going to open the packet here. here. This is what a rough looks like. Oh, sorry, comparison. Look at this. <laughs> they even don't have the walnuts on top because so many people are allergic to nuts these days. This is, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But here we go, and I'll show you. So this packet cost me $3. Uh, okay, we're going to compare what's going on here. The size first. Look at the colour. Whoa, the topping. Milk chocolate. <laughs> Mine, icing and walnuts, woo, absolutely. Biscuit heaven. Ah, oh, I think I don't even need to ask you to vote, do I? Look, it's just, yeah, amazing, amazing. So let's look at what's in them first. So we know in mine is butter, sugar, flour, cocoa, cornflakes, and then the topping has cocoa, icing, sugar, butter, and hot water, and we've got walnuts on top. So we know exactly, no comparison yet, we know exactly what's in it. This one here. What do we have? Oh my goodness. Ingredients. Sucre. Farine de something. De bleu. Oh, no, that's French. Oh, 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 that's, is it French or something? I can't read that one. I'd better get on to the English one. 
The darker the better. Okay, here we go in English. Ingredients. Sugar, number one. My one, number one's butter. Wheat flour. Wheat is written in um, bold. Vegetable fat, which is anti antioxidant. Wheat flakes. Sugar. Barley malt extract, salt, emulsifier, butter, cream salt. So it says butter and then it says cream salt in, um, in brackets. Milk solids, cocoa butter, invert syrup, coconut, cocoa mass. It's very small writing. Even my glasses don't help. Cocoa powder, salt, raising agents, baking soda, emulsifiers, soy, lecithin, natural flavor, natural color, contains, is it 10% or 18%, I can't read, milk chocolate, maybe 18%, contains wheat, gluten, barley, milk, and soybean products, may contain other cereals containing gluten, sesame seeds, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, and sulfites. So which one are you going to go for, kids? <laughs> vegetable fat. Vegetable fat is here in New Zealand is something we call cremelta. I know we can't. Well, that's, that's it, Antoinette. We can never pronounce the ingredients. That is crazy. All of that goes into a very inferior-looking afghan. <laughs> So that's a bit of fun, just to compare that. I can't believe they used, they actually used to look a lot, lot better. Look, used to look a lot, lot better. So it says chunky chocolate and classic, and the sign does say, um, same Vicky, new name. <laughs> yes! I, do, I know, it does sound terrible, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But hey, they're quite edible and, you know, like, it's it's a, it's a great snack, actually. So I shouldn't really be too... It's just, you know, homemade is always better. So just before I go, I'm going to read you the recipe. Oh, and there's the photo of them in the recipe book. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. I'm just going to, for those that want the recipe, here we go, Afghans. We should have a competition and rename them ourselves. So we could think of something. Actually, I understand that the name actually came from the... Oh, thank you, Danny. I understand the name actually came from a colour on, on a pink chart that was called Afghan Brown. So, and that was from like the 1930s. So that's that's what I've heard is where the original name came from. So um, I'm sorry if we've offended anybody with the name and the baking of the Afghans, but they still take delicious taste delicious take a bite yes i could i could yeah i ate, actually ate them on my theater scope um hats afghans 200 grams or seven ounces of butter 75 grams or three ounces of sugar 175 grams or six ounces of flour no plastic here 25 grams or one ounce of cocoa 50 grams or two ounces of corn flakes I'm beeping, so just I'll give you the method in a moment. I do need an oven broth. So this is good. As they come out of the oven, they are still very, very soft and don't move them. So if you like a perfectly shaped um, cookie, while they're still hot and pliable, push them into shape with a knife. And you then you'll end up with what looks like a ball bun. <laughs> so that's what you do because you can see they're still all oh, hot that's still very very soft so that's my trick for um you know sometimes you get a little bit more butter in one than the other and so you want to just push it back into shape so you can do that quite easily those are not too bad <laughs> Yay, awesome so on with the turn this off on with the method soften the butter Add the sugar and beat to a cream. So, you know, it's just mix it well together. If you, if English is not your first language, beating something to a cream is actually not a really good description. 
<laughs> Add the flour and the cocoa and lastly the cornflakes. Put spoonfuls onto a greased oven tray and bake about 15 minutes at 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. When cold, ice with chocolate icing and put walnuts on top. Ah, 50 grams or two ounces. And just like that. So they keep well in the fridge. They'll keep for, you know, a week. More, more, more. Because the butter and the sugar, the butter is sort of like a preservative. So it's the sugar. There's not a lot of sugar there anyway. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is the old Edmunds cookbook. <laughs> all, the, all the mixes. Yeah. So I reckon we're done. That's good. So, uh, cooking made easy, written with baking success in mind, over 3 million copies sold. Uh, this, my one was published in the 1980s. So, like, grandmothers, uh, you know, I can remember my mother's cookbook was so old, it just didn't have a hard cover, and it was not nearly as, as thick as this, but it was it was a great book to, to go to. Anyway, I'm going to finish now. Thank you all very much for joining me. Foodie Friday. Um, any other questions before I go, or do I need to? I will, I'll take a bite for you. <laughs> You'll hear the crunch. I'll take one of these. This looks a good one, because it's nice and big, look. Mm. They're good. They're really, really good. Mm. Fantastic, actually. You never get sick of them. Oh, yeah. These knives are fantastic. You'll find these in second-hand shops. Unless you've still got them in your family. Bone handle, silver. Um, what does it say? Something in rail. Walk, oh no, Walker and Hall. Walker and Hall, New Zealand. There's Silversmiths. Mm. Thanks, Paula. Good. Hey, thanks for joining me, everybody. Now, this icing, when it goes thick, you can either just add a little bit more hot water to it or microwave. And just stick it in the microwave only for a few seconds. It'll just soften the butter up and it becomes spreadable again. So it's all good. All good. So that's a little bit of cooking. Fantastic. Yes, mum still has them. Yes, they're fantastic. They're really, really great, um, you know, baking knives or even just to use on platters. I think they're gorgeous with the bone handle. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. I, I can remember I did throw a lot out once. <laughs> ah, the things we throw out. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Awesome. Okay, everybody. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, you'll lick it. <laughs> yes. Kids line up, that's for sure. Okay, thank you, everybody. Have a fabulous Friday. Um, America's Cup racing here a little bit later, so let's hope the Americans have a better a better day today. Um, look forward to seeing you all again here on Haps. Thank you for watching, and um, that's really awesome. I'm really happy I did this. I might have to do some more. <laughs> yes thank you okay take care everybody remember if you've got a little if you'd like to go live yourself you can actually do it now on haps which is awesome and you could get a reward okay thank you i'll see you all later um very very cool thanks for joining me and yep see you danny see you antoinette everybody that's here really awesome and i'll see you again soon okay take care bye from new zealand <laughs> bye don't forget to have an afghan or a rough. They're both pretty similar. Okay, take care. Okay, bye. Thanks, Kathy. Bye. See you all. <laughs>